It's Friday, August 3rd, and your stories today are Ethereum's Pegasus announces Orion, the Philippines' new ICO guidelines, and an undercover sting. Hello world, you're watching The Comet on ETH News. For your first story today, according to a recent announcement from Pegasus, a protocol engineering arm of consensus, the team has open sourced its private transaction manager, Orion, via GitHub. The Java-based product allows private transactions to be distributed among enterprise Ethereum nodes. Under the system, only nodes associated with a private transaction can view its contents. The application is compatible with enterprise-level Ethereum clients. For example, JP Morgan's Quorum can use Orion's application program interfaces. This release uh, complies with the business specifications published back in May by the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. The guidelines specify a permission subsystem that enables authorized parties to engage in private transactions. <laughs> And on August 2nd, the Securities and Exchange Commission in the Philippines issued a draft outlining new regulations on companies conducting initial coin offerings. The new draft rules contain standards that require any company in the country wishing to issue an ICO to first submit an initial assessment request to the SEC a full 90 days before the commencement of the ICO. In this assessment request, companies must explain their project and their need for an ICO in detail. A company must also show that they are following rules concerning things such as the advertisement of their ICO, the qualifications an issuer or advisor must have before the SEC will approve their ICO, and even rules pertaining to what the regulator expects from a company's white paper. The commission believes all tokens being issued in an ICO should be treated as securities. On Thursday, a man in Arizona who went by the alias Morpheus Titania was sentenced to 41 months in federal prison for using Bitcoin to launder drug money. The man, whose real name is Thomas Mario Constanzo, was arrested back in April of 2017. Having a previous conviction for marijuana possession, he was initially indicted for being a convict in possession of weapons. A superseding indictment followed, adding five money laundering charges and two counts of operating an unlicensed money transaction business. Agents reportedly initiated their investigation of Constanzo in 2014 after seeing an advertisement on a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange website offering transactions of up to $50,000. It led to a joint investigation that included DEA, IRS, and ICE agents, and of course the Scottsdale Police Department. Word of advice, if you're going to launder money, maybe, I don't know, don't advertise it. That's our comment for the day, and it's time to tell us yours. Do you have any interest in Pegasus or Ryan? Do you agree with the Philippines' decision to classify tokens as securities? And how dumb do you have to be to advertise your illegal activity? Let me know what you think. Find us on social media. Have a wonderful day. And as always, don't forget to leave a comment. Join me back here on The Comment as I catch you up on the latest in Ethereum and blockchain. If you like this episode, let me know by clicking the thumbs up. If you didn't like this episode, let me know by clicking the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you get all the newest episodes of The Comment as they air by clicking that alert button. That's that bell looking thing next to the word subscribe. If you miss our latest episodes, you can catch up on ethnews.com or on YouTube or just subscribe so you don't miss them anymore, silly. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ethnewsy. That's at ethnewsci. And we'll see you next time.